Okay, uh, prepare yourself for this. There are a ton of shortcuts, look at them. The Photoshop color picker is garbage, if you double click on it, you will get this beautiful window where you control exactly which color you want. Also, if you go to keyboard shortcut and menus, you can find the foreground color picker and assign it a shortcut, therefore making this process a lot quicker. Actions are amazing, if you can click something with mouse, then you can record it and assign it a shortcut with action. Like for example, making new layers, merging down layers, selecting different brushes, flipping the canvas, create an action that makes more actions. Or you could make an action that makes your signature. Perfect every single time. Or creating a full opacity selection around an object so you can fill it with a white color and preserving its original color anywhere you want. You get the idea. Blending modes are awesome. You can access them by shift right click and selecting whatever you want. Or you can use shortcuts. For example, shift alt N for normal mode, shift alt M for multiply mode, shift alt S for screen mode, shift alt D for color dodge doll. Did I say doll? Shift Alt W for linear dodge. Shift Alt O for overlay. But don't expect ever reaching Shift Alt O with your human fingers, unless you you have spider fingers. I wish I had spider fingers. And here is the list of all the blending modes that you can use. Though usually I just randomly click my keyboard buttons with Shift Alt until I get what I need. The blending mode shortcuts also work on your layer if you have selection tool enabled. So if I press Shift Alt M, it will change to multiply mode. Shift Alt W, Shift Alt O. You get the idea. If you click button mode on your action window, you're gonna have these pretty buttons. For example, I can use motion blur, or I can use sharpen. What's the difference between opacity and flow? Opacity affects full brush stroke while flow affects individual stamps of brush. I can easily show this if I increase spacing. This is 100% 100%. Each square has full opacity. This is 100% opacity and 50% flow. Each square has 50% of opacity. But if they overlay, opacity is gonna stack. But if you do the same thing with opacity on the full stroke, this won't happen. If you press numbers on keyboard, things will change. If you press shift numbers on keyboard, other things will change. If you alt click something in Photoshop, it will delete forever. Yes, there's no warning signs, it's gone. So make sure you make backups all the time for your tool presets and brushes in order to avoid this kind of accident. This is terrible. If you go to window, arrange, new window, you can create a duplication of your active working space. Now you can still draw and see the results in real time. If you have a second monitor, this might be useful. You can really easily colorize a black and white picture by using color balance, Ctrl B, and messing around with sliders. A more advanced version of doing it is by going to Image, Adjustment, Selective Color. I set my shortcut to Ctrl Alt S but in default Photoshop, it doesn't have a shortcut, so you must go and, and give it something. And selective color is more interesting because it gives you a better control over what you want to do. Control Alt arrow keys allow you to extrude your drawing from selection, of course. Control Alt Shift increases the rate from one pixel to five pixels or something. I don't know. Ctrl T allows you to modify a selection. Ctrl Alt T allows you to modify a selection while keeping the source. Ctrl Shift Alt T allows you to repeat last transformation. And that transformation is applied to your active selections. So if you modify your selection or delete your selection, it will mess up your canvas. So basically you can make cool things by making small transformations and distortions and then pressing Ctrl Shift Alt T many times. You can apply filters to your quick mask. 
and then you can apply filters to that selection from the quick mask to which you added filter before. <laughs> you can repeat last filter by pressing Ctrl F or if you want to repeat last filter but change some settings you can press Ctrl Alt F. When in free transform mode you can easily define the anchor point by holding Alt and clicking where you want it to be. This is really useful for like everything. Smudge tool on re really high strength is actually fun to paint with. If you apply scatter effect to your smudge tool, it kinda works as a blend tool. Puppet warp is amazing. You basically don't have to worry about proportions ever again. And content aware scale is very funny. <laughs> oh, did you know that you can make animations in Photoshop? Here's the timeline. You can get it in window, timeline. Make sure you enable the video mode, not the frame mode. God, this is useless. So basically, the most important thing that you want to do if you want to animate in Photoshop is go to shortcuts and panel menu, timeline video and split at playhead. You must define this shortcut because this will make your life a lot easier. Basically, what this shortcut does is where your timeline is, if you press Ctrl E, it will split it. You can make motion twins in Photoshop. Open this arrow, create keyframe for initial position and keyframe for desired position. If you turn your layer into a smart object, you can animate it again. Animation inside animation. But be careful, because smart objects will slow down your computer. This is a really demanding feature. So make sure you start without smart objects, and when you want to make something fancy, you go to smart objects. Also, I forgot to say, smart objects allow you to create transformation twin, which is different from position twin, because in transformation you can change the scale and distort. Your working area is defined by these brackets, so if you export the movie, only what's inside these brackets is what's going to be exported. You can export GIFs by clicking Ctrl Shift Alt S. This will open you save for web and here you can select GIF for example. Just be careful not to have a really big size uh, documents because this might take a while. If it's ready. You can change the shape of your canvas by using crop tool. Just resize it. You can use clear blending mode to delete with your brush at the same time as you use it to paint. The shortcut for this is Shift Alt R for erase and Shift Alt N to go back to normal. The same thing applies to the bucket tool. If you set your bucket tool to clear, it will erase. And here we are, I'm already kinda running out of ideas. Of course there are a lot, a lot more shortcuts, a lot of more small things. I think I glazed over like the most important and, and the things I use the most uh, of times. But I still like learning uh, new things every, every day. So, let me guys know what you think, and I might keep doing this, uh, maybe a bit more organized, or if you want, I could make uh, like a more in-depth exploration of a tool, 
so I no, I will explain the most of I know about a specific subject if you're interested in but for now I think that's it <laughs> here's a small speed drawing of expressions that I I'm expecting my viewers to have after this video but yeah thank you for watching and see you next time Thank you.